Hey everyone, my name is Nate McClary. I'm a third year student in the Doctor of Physical Therapy program at the University of Tennessee Health Science Center, and I'm also a personal trainer. This month's segment is titled Crunchless Core Workouts. So just some quick anatomy. Um, your body is a chain of muscles, and there's muscles that are called synergists that help other muscles perform movements. And oftentimes with core workouts, what happens is that people put a lot more stress on their hip flexors performing the movement than they do their abs. So let's take the Roman chair, for example, which is a machine that you prop up in, uh, resting on your elbows to where your legs are hanging, and most of the time people perform just like this. And so what they're doing is they're really just working their hip flexors. Now your abs pull down your rib cage and posteriorly tilt your pelvis. Your hip flexors, of course, flex your hip, but they also, one of the muscles goes up and it can overextend your spine. Now this is why sometimes you get people that get back pain um, from performing different exercises. Same can be with the sit up, when people are sitting up they'll overextend the spine and then their abs are just hanging on while their hip flexors perform the movement doing the sit up. Um, so again this is a progression that uh, we use pretty often and as long as you stay uh, strong in your form it will be a great one for you. Um, so what I want you to do is we're going to perform the progression, we got a few exercises to go through and don't worry about moving on to the next exercise until you've fully mastered uh, the one that we're currently doing. So this may be that you just do a bunch of reps with this one exercise, shortening the range of motion before you move on to the next one. And don't, don't get discouraged. Uh, these exercises are actually uh, pretty tough, especially once we get to the last few. So these are called dead bugs. What you're going to do is lay on your back on the ground. The first one, we're going to do dead bugs with alternating arms. So we're going to bring our legs to the tabletop position, flexing our hips to 90 degrees, flexing our knees to 90 degrees, and flexing our shoulders to 90 degrees. All right? We're going to squeeze our abs down and in so that you cannot reach your hand under. Okay? So this will be where we're really trying to pull our rib cage down. And then we're simply going to alternate taking our arms over. Now this won't seem like much at first, but it's the first exercise in our progression. What you don't want to do is when you're reaching back, let your core lose position and overarch at your rib cage. You want that rib cage to stay down, those abs to stay nice and tight the whole time. So once you perform about eight reps, we'll go on to the next one. The next one is going to be both arms. It's going to be more challenging. So again, we'll pull our abs tight. Make sure that lower back is being pressed into the floor. We're going to go straight back. Again, don't let that rib cage come up. Once you perform eight, eight reps, we move on to the next one. So the next one, what we're going to do is we're going to find a bony prominence called the ASIS, which is your anterior superior iliac spine. Um, and basically it's uh, a bone from your pelvis that sticks out on both sides. Okay, if you went a little bit lower, you find muscle, a little bit higher, you get to your belly. So we're going to find that because that's going to help us to know if we're really controlling our pelvis or not. We're going to come back to the tabletop position, and this time we're going to lower our legs. First, again, squeeze our abs, pushing our lower back into the ground, and lower down. Now what you'll feel here is once you start to lose position, your pelvis is going to tilt, and you're going to feel this ASIS move down towards your feet. So what you want to do is squeeze your abs hard enough so that it doesn't happen. And we're going to alternate legs. And so it could be that you only get to right here before you start to feel your pelvis shift. That's fine. Just come back to the top. So see my abs are performing the work and being held in the optimal position while my hip flexors allow my legs to go out. Alright, so after we perform about 8 reps of that, we can reset. Find our ASIS again, come up, squeeze our abs in, and now we'll take both legs out. And so this whole time that I have my abs on, I shouldn't be able to put the hand underneath, and I should feel my pelvis not move forward. Pull tight, and go out. So again, it may be that you only get out to right here. That's fine, I'm simply come back, perform eight reps in that short range of motion. Now we're going to start combining it all. So for this one, legs up again, shoulders up, squeeze our abs, pull them tight, and now we're going to alternate. So take it nice and slow so that you can feel that your lower back is still on the ground, that your rib cage is pulled down. And 
Okay, and again, short range of motion is fine if you get to this one, and you got to keep it short. Last but not least, we want to do both arms and both legs. Again, tabletop position, arms flex, squeeze those abs nice and tight, and take them both over. So again, in this position, I shouldn't be able to reach a hand underneath my back. My rib cage stays down, my pelvis stays tilted back. All right, do two more. And that's it. So again, that's called a dead bug progression. Don't worry about moving on to the next exercise until you get done. And really be a stickler to your form. You've got to keep those abs controlled nice and tight. Keeps your spine in neutral alignment. Allows your abs to perform work the way that they're supposed to.